2 Timothy chapter number 4. Begin reading verse number 1. The Bible says, I charge thee therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing at his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant, in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Lord, we thank you for your excellent greatness. We're thankful for your faithfulness. Lord, we're thankful that thy ways are pure and true. And God, we're thankful to be able to come to the house of God this morning. Now, Lord, we thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for two good jail services. Thank you for a good song service. Lord, I enjoyed the congregational singing. I enjoyed the youth choir singing, enjoyed the special singing. Lord, it's been good for us to be here this morning. Now, Lord, I realize as, Lord, we've read the text you've laid on our hearts that, Lord, there are those amongst us today who are shouldering burdens. There are those amongst us today that, Lord, they've worked hard this week and they've endured... Uh, against the world and the wiles of the devil and even their own uh, uh, fleshly desires. Uh, Lord, they've come in after, uh, Lord, a busy week and, Lord, even uh, uh, the sorry devil would try to oppress them while they're in the house of God. Lord, I pray you'd put a hedge about us now and I pray that, Lord, uh, you would permeate this place with your presence. Uh, you'd lift hearts and you'd lift spirits uh, You'd lift heads. Uh, and God, you do a work in our midst this morning, uh, a work of revival amongst your people. Uh, and God, may we uh, uh, leave out rejoicing. Some may have come in low. May they leave out skipping on the hills because they've met with Jesus. Uh, and Father, I pray that, Lord, uh, there be any amongst us today lost without God, uh, that today would be the day of their salvation. Uh, Father, use this unworthy vessel now. Uh, speak to our hearts. Uh, glorify your namesake. Uh, we'll bless you and praise you for all that you do. Uh, for it's in the holy name and the wonderful name and the name that's above every name, uh, the name of the Lord Jesus, we ask these things. Uh, amen. Uh, amen. Here we find that the great apostle Paul's about ready to go off the scene. Uh, uh, the Lord has given him a little insight that his time on earth is about over. Uh, and here he is uh, exhorting and charging uh, a, a young Timothy, a young pastor, a man that Paul had won to the Lord, uh, a man that Paul had trained in the Lord, uh, and a man that Paul is now giving some final words uh, before the great apostle goes on to glory. Uh, notice that Paul charges Timothy, first of all, uh, concerning the truth. Uh, look again, if you will, in verse number 2. He said, uh, preach the word. Uh, can I say that it's not popular to preach the Bible today? Uh, can I say today that people want uh, little sermonettes? Uh, they want little uh, uh, poetry things. They want things to make their uh, uh, flesh feel better about their miserable lives. Uh, a lot of places that call themselves churches today uh, have nothing more uh, uh, than just uh, uh, some feel-good, uh, self-help type of messages. Uh, 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 but can I say... Uh, uh, the only thing that's going to convert a sinner to become a saint of God, uh, uh, the only thing that's going to help the saint of God, uh, uh, the only thing that's going to keep your life on the straight and narrow uh, is the precious preaching uh, of the Word of God. Uh, he said, preach the Word. Uh, be instant in season, out of season. Uh, that means if they want to hear it uh, and if they don't want to hear it, uh, just preach the Word. Uh, he said, uh, uh, reprove rebuke, uh, 
Well, we don't like to be reproved. Uh, we don't like to be rebuked. Uh, uh, we think we're doing good. Uh, we think everything's running well. Uh, but when we line ourselves up with the mirror of the Word of God and look in there, uh, by, uh, uh, we find out we're not doing as good as we think we are. Uh, he says, exhort uh, with all long suffering and doctrine. Uh, he said, hey, even uh, uh, if it takes a long time for them to get it, just keep exhorting on my with doctrine that's a dirty word in a lot of churches today a lot of people say just preach Jesus don't preach doctrine you can't preach D Jesus if you don't preach doctrine can I say that there's a lot of churches today that preach the name of Jesus but they don't know him and can I say without him you have no doctrine you know what doctrine really is and what they're saying is don't preach on my sins you know what doctrine that word really means? The Bible. Preach the truth. Preach the Bible rightly divided. See, anybody can take any verse in this Bible and build a doctrine on it if they take it out of context to mean anything they want it to mean. But to rightly divide the Bible, you need to read the chapter before the verse is in, the chapter the verse is in, and the chapter afterwards to find out who they're talking to uh, and what context they're talking about. Uh, and then you've got to find it in two or three places in the Bible in the same context uh, in order for it to be a doctrine. And so he's saying, preach the truth. We also find that Paul is charging Timothy concerning the times. Look, if you will, verse 3. He said, for the time will come, and it's already here. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Can I say that we would have to uh, rent out the old Sears building at the mall to have a facility big enough if we had everybody that at one time has come to the Emmanuel Baptist Church but left. Amen. You know what the Bible says? It said if they would have been of us, they would have not have left us. Amen. You know what divides the Bible? You preach this Bible and not everybody's going to like it. Mm. Uh, every time I preach on hell, I watch people cringe. Uh, it's in the Bible. Jesus preached on it. Matter of fact, Jesus preached on hell twice as much as he preached on heaven. But notice what he says about the time. He said, They would not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. They want their ears tickled. They don't want their toes stepped on. Can I say this? As we sit here today in America, there's over 300 different religions and denominations. Can I say the vast majority, over 90% of them, are less than 150 years old? Less than 150 years old. Can I say in Baptist churches, most of the preaching that you hear preached is no, no older than 50 to 60 years. See, I can read everything Jesus preached. I can read everything Paul preached. I can read everything that James and John and Peter preached. But a lot of things that are being preached today is not in the Bible. A lot of things being preached today is just modern philosophy to tickle the ears of people so they keep putting money in the plate so that the preacher gets uh, taken care of. Hmm? Well, I've got good news for you. If Jesus can't take care of me, I'm in the wrong business. Huh? We well, see he deals with the times. Time's coming whether or not endure sound doctrine. We live in that time. Hmm? Matter of fact, men that are Bible preachers are becoming fewer and fewer and farther in between. I'm amazed at how many churches just don't even have service very often. I guess the preacher can't find anything to preach on, Brother Phil. I got a whole Bible. You give me five minutes in, uh, to pray and, and five minutes to look at the Bible, I'll come up with something to say, I guarantee you, huh? But there's a lot of folks, they don't, they don't like the Bible. 
There's a lot of preachers that don't preach the Bible. Hmm? And so he deals with the truth. He deals with the times. Now, he also charges Timothy concerning turning. Look in verse number 4. He says, And they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned unto fables. There's a lot of people who believe a lot of things to be Bible that aren't in the Bible. There are people that believe that the Spirit flows from breast to breast. Show me chapter and verse for that. You won't. There's a lot of people who believe all kinds of things that aren't in the Bible. There's a lot of people who believe that there were three wise men at the manger when Jesus was born. Well, you go study Luke chapter 2, you don't find any wise men there. You go study Matthew chapter 2, you find the wise men showed up and Jesus was at a house. He was probably about two years of age before the wise men showed up. But they don't preach that. Because they don't fit their little narrative, you know, manger scene story. Uh, uh, by the way, he wasn't born December 25th. They don't preach that either. The shepherds uh, wasn't keeping watch over their sheep, uh, over their flock in, in the night in December. Not in Jerusalem. It was probably sometime in September that he came. But here's the important thing. It's not important the date he came. It's important that he came. If he wanted us to worship a date that he came, he'd have gave us the date. You know why we worship December 25th as the birth of Christ? It falls with a winter soulless pagan holiday. That's why. Hmm? And can I, can I help you with something? A lot of things about Christmas are pagan. Hmm? Now listen, I don't worship a tree. I don't worship a lot of things that a lot of people worship. I do love the Lord Jesus and I worship Him. I'm glad He came and I'm glad that we do have a day that the world has to recognize that He came. And I'm going to shout it from the hilltops that he came. But I ain't taking off church. Thank you, Brother Phil. You say, Brother Doug, that's a good time to meet with your family. So Saturday. So's Friday. But the Lord's Day is the Lord's Day. Regardless of what date it falls on. Let me help you with something. The Lord told Israel to keep the Sabbath day holy. If they were caught even working on the Sabbath day, they were stoned. Now the Sabbath is Saturday. We don't worship on the Sabbath. We worship on Sunday because that's the day the Lord got up out of the grave. And can I say we're to keep the Lord's day holy. Thank you, Phil. Two of us. You say, well, Brother Doug, does God really mean... Oh, yeah. Uh, matter of fact, if I had time, I'd turn you over there in the Bible where we're not to have respect unto holy days or what we use as holidays. You know what we're to respect? The Lord's Day. So, no, we don't cancel if December 25th falls on the Lord's Day. Sunday morning or Sunday night. Especially a holiday that's supposed to be about Him. If the Catholics can have 14 services and uh, uh, the feel-good churches can have 27 services, uh, why in the world can't a Bible-believing church uh, just have church, my dear friends? Well, that ain't even the message, but that just kind of busts your apple cart right there. You was all on that preach the truth till I did. Matter of fact, if I was a member of the church that canceled on Christmas, I'd look for another church. We don't cancel on Easter. I'm interested in verse number two before y'all pass out on me. He said, preach the word. Then he says, be instant in season, out of season. I'm going to preach with God's help on this little thought this morning. 
I want to preach on tis the season. He said, be instant in season, out of season. Tis the season. Tis the season to worship. Tis the season Amen. for the goodness of God. Tis the season to preach truth. Right. Tis the season uh, to uh, endure sound doctrine. Uh, hey, uh, 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 Jude wrote uh, uh, that we're to earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Uh, hey, what we do around here is important. Uh, so important that Jesus uh, uh, left it for, uh, for us uh, in order that... Uh, he might have faith on the earth when he comes. Amen. So tis the season. Can I say first of all, tis the season to celebrate. Yeah, sure. I'm in a celebratory mood, aren't you? Amen. Uh, I've already got all my Christmas shopping done. Hallelujah, what a blessing. Uh, that's what's wrong with some of y'all. You're looking for the blue light special and you just found out Kmart's been closed for a decade. You're in trouble. Uh Tis the season to celebrate. Amen. These are exciting times. Sure. Say, preacher, what we got to celebrate about? We, uh, we can celebrate that the Savior came. Yeah. He came, wrapped himself in flesh, became like us, that one day we'll be like him. Uh, hey, had he not came, uh, you and I'd have no hope. Uh, we'd have nothing to celebrate. Uh, hey, uh, hey, turn the lights on. Uh, crank up the music. Uh, have yourself a time. Because uh, Jesus came. Uh, uh, we have something to celebrate this morning. Uh, he came. You know, the fact that Jesus was born showed that God loved us so much He didn't want us to go to hell. Uh, we got something to celebrate. I don't have to go to hell. Why? Jesus came, huh? So let's celebrate. Uh, it's the season to celebrate. Uh, not only did the Savior come, uh, but can I say we can celebrate that the Savior completed what He came to do. Uh, while He's on the cross, He said, It is finished. Uh, what was finished? Uh, the plan that God had set in order uh, on a redeemed fallen man. Uh, hey, uh, Jesus was the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Uh, hey, He came uh, for one purpose, uh, not to do miracles, uh, not to make a name for Himself. Uh, his name's greater than any other name that's ever been mentioned. Uh, uh, the first time His name was spoken where mortal ears could hear, uh, an angel had to speak it. Uh, hey, He came uh, to die. Uh, he came uh, uh, to pay our sin debt. Uh, he came to be buried and rose again. Uh, hey, we've got something to celebrate. Uh, we can celebrate the Savior came. The Savior completed what He came to do. We can celebrate that the Savior converts sinners. Hallelujah. He came seeking to save that which was lost. Uh, and those that are lost, uh, when they realize they're lost, uh, uh, can see that Jesus paid their sin debt. Uh, they can be set free. Uh, their sins can be washed away. Uh, though our sins be as scarlet, they can be white as wool. Uh, and we can be forgiven. Uh, we can be made a child of God. Uh, we can be converted from a vile, filthy wretch uh, into something that God says uh, I'm pleased with. Uh, I'll robe them in my righteousness. Uh, I'll make them a joint heir to everything I own. Uh, what a blessing to be in the family of God. We got something to celebrate. Now listen, I know you don't have anybody like this in your family, but I got some in my family I just uh, soon not hang around. But hey, when you get to God's family, that's a whole different realm right there. Uh, I think I'll preach one of these days. There'll be no Cousin Eddie's in God's family. Really, Clark? Huh? Anyway. Uh, I'm looking for a Cousin Eddie blow-up to put in my front yard. I love him. Uh, I want the one where he's cleaning out the RV out in the sewers. I, I think that'd be a great blow-up to have in the front yard. Thad, find me that. You find all kinds of weird stuff. Find me that, huh? We've got something to celebrate. Amen. The Savior converts sinners. Preacher, what we got to celebrate? Tis the season to celebrate the Savior's coming. 
We just spent my Sunday school class looking at the parable of the fig tree, and all we could figure out at the end is we're not smart enough to figure it out, but we know he's coming, and we know he's coming soon. Uh, you look at everything going on in this world, the open wickedness and vileness in this world, uh, and I'm talking about uh, 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 not only on Main Street. I mean, it's in homes. It's all over this place. Uh, 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 things uh, are becoming like they were in the days of Noah. Uh, and it's about to the point where God's about ready to repent that he made man. Uh, hey, destroyed this world with a flood one, one time. Uh, but he's going to destroy it with fire the next time. Uh, hey, I believe uh, he's about ready to stoke it up. Uh, hey, this thing's a winding down. Uh, and on the scope of eternity, we've just got minutes left. Uh, hey, we ought to celebrate. He's about ready to take us out of this old vile world. Uh, I don't know about you, but I'm sick and tired of all the stupidity going on in this world. All the wickedness in this world. I'm tired you can't watch a commercial anymore that they don't have two men kissing on it. Uh, I don't know about you, but that disgusts me. Whatever product it is, I ain't buying it. Mm. That's wicked. That's vile. They're just uh, uh, ramming it down our throats trying to make us accept it. Uh, well, they can try all they want to. This old boy ain't accepting that wickedness. Uh, and by the way, God made two genders, uh, male and female. He made them. Uh, and he made the female from the male uh, because there was nothing in this world to satisfy him. Uh, and God gave him a gift, the female, to be his helpmate. Uh, hey, listen, uh, they can try and promote whatever agenda they want. Uh, I'll stick with God's agenda. And one of these days, he's going to take us out of this old mess. Uh, want to be wonderful? Go to a land where you don't hear of any more aborted babies. Right. But we're going to a land where God's taken all those aborted babies and he's picked up the pieces and he's made them whole. Oh, what a day that's going to be. Down here, there's mamas that didn't want them. God wanted every one of them. Uh, I'm so tired of all the lies and hypocrisy that's going on in this nation and this world. Uh, listen, back in the day, even lost people had more respect for God than the so-called so Christians do today. We're going to a better land. He's a coming. And can I just get this off my chest? I hate that looming commercial woman. You seen that woman? First of all, she's got her face right over the whole TV. She's a weird looking woman anyway. And she made this stuff that makes people not stink. Well, I'm all for that people not stinking. I think you ought to not stink. God gave us soap and He gave us deodorant and He gave us perfume and cologne and all that. Nobody ought to stink. Matter of fact, even poor people can afford soap. But this woman gets on my nerves. I mean, she's, she, she does, she comes on and I just want to throw something at the TV. I'm not kidding you. Have you seen the one where she's got a woman portraying a doctor smelling another woman's rear end? <laughs> What is going on with this world? That is crazy. I'm telling you, that's where we're headed. Used to, people had some decency. They had some sense. Uh, you'd never see anything like that going on. Now it's normal. Well, it's not normal to me. But we're going to land. Hallelujah. We've got to celebrate. There'll be no loomy in heaven. What a blessing. I hate them commercials. I hate them. Uh, and don't send me no pictures of Lumi. <laughs> Said something the other day. I knew it was getting cold because, you know, dry skin and all that. And he sends me pictures of people itching and all kinds of stuff. I mean, he's a nut. Y'all don't know what I have to endure. It is the season to celebrate. We can celebrate we'll be there when the Savior's crowned. When the royal diadem's placed upon him. Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Do you know Satan's going to bow before him and profess him to be Lord? Uh, listen, he didn't have to be made Lord. He's always been Lord. But there's coming a day everybody's going to recognize that he's Lord. 
Tis the season to celebrate. Can I say this? Tis the season to connect, to engage in some things. Can I say we ought to engage or connect with the church? What a blessing to be a part of the Lord's church. Jesus loved the church and gave himself for it. I'm a local church man. I believe Jesus uh, loves the church. Do you realize in your King James Bible, 115 times you'll find the word church in the New Testament. 112 times it's referring to the ecclesia, the local called out assembly. The Lord Jesus is for the local church. Hallelujah. Thank God for a local church. Uh, hey, we don't answer to a hierarchy. We answer to the Lord. Uh, uh, we don't need somebody's permission to do something. We just need the Lord's unction on it. Uh, hey, this is the Lord's church. He's the head of it. Uh, uh, we're His body. We just get to uh, go along for the ride, but He's the one in control of this thing. Uh, thank the Lord. I'm, I'm glad I'm part of His church. And I make people mad every time I say this statement, but I'm going to say it whether it hair lips the devil or not. Listen, anything that bypasses the local church is wrong. The Lord only honors things that go through and by the local church. Why do you think we uh, uh, support our missionaries directly? You know, every dollar we spend, we send to all those missionaries back there on that board, they get every dollar of it. It don't go to some secretary or somebody that oversees the funds or anything. It goes right to them. Thank the Lord. Why? Because that's the Bible way, huh? You know, I don't find when Paul said that time and time again you sin under my necessity, I don't see where those messengers that brought the needs to Paul that he had from the church at Thessalonica, I don't see where the messengers said, well, I'm going to take out my portion. Paul got everything they sent. Thank God for the church and the Bible way. By the way, Paul and Silas were sent out of the local church. Paul and Barnabas were sent out of the local church. Thank God for the church. Uh, I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for somebody that's part of a ministry. You have no church, you have no ministry. Amen. Uh, and by the way, any ministry that's got a na man's name attached to it, run from it. Amen. Uh, when somebody tells you this is my ministry, note them. Mm -mm, this is the Lord's ministry. I'm just glad to go along and be a part of anything the Lord wants me to be a part of, huh? Oh, yeah, that does upset some of you, but oh, well. Hey, tis the season to connect, to engage with the church. I'm thankful to be a part of the church. What a blessing. It's time to engage or connect in conversation. Those that you sit around uh, at the dinner table or uh, at a restaurant, those that... Uh, uh, you may come in contact with down to shopping center or somewhere. Hey, that don't mean just because you come in contact with them that they're headed to heaven. Strike up a conversation with them. You might find out they're looking for a church. Uh, they might be uh, in need of a church. Uh, 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 I heard this story. I, I won't call them out. We had somebody in the church. It was, uh, 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 I guess, out in the community, out shopping or something. And the little girl looked at her and said, Will you pray for me? And, and the person said, I'll pray for you if you pray for me. Well, uh, uh, they asked uh, the mama, Where y'all go to church? They said, Well, we've been looking for one. Where do you go to church? Well, let me tell you where I go to church. You see, you strike up a conversation, and it all started when a uh, uh, person told that little girl how pretty she was or something. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to say, you strike up a conversation, you never know where it's going to lead. But I promise you, if you don't strike up a conversation, it's not going to lead anywhere. Time to engage, connect. Time to engage, connect through commitment. It's time like no other time to be committed to the things of God. He's coming. He's coming soon. The nighttime coming when no man can work, so we better get at it. We're way behind the eight ball on that thing. Tis the season to celebrate, to connect. Tis the, tis the season to conquer some things. Some of you have been in church long enough, you should, but you should be a lot farther down the road than where you are. Amen. It's time to conquer some things. Amen. First of all, you need to conquer your fears. Say, so how can I conquer my fears? You can't, but Jesus can conquer all of them. Right. So it's time you give them to Him and leave them with Him. Mm? Those things that, that, that you're so afraid of and everything, you know, perfect love casts out all fear. you got a love problem. Your love for Jesus isn't what it should be, or you'd give him all those things you're afraid of. It's time you conquered in fears, give them to Jesus. Let him have them. He can handle them. 
He knows what to do with them, and He'll strengthen you once you give them to Him. Hmm? We need to conquer those fears. We need to conquer those failures of the past. Some of you are still living back there where you blew it, where you did something you shouldn't have done, and you're letting that haunt you every day of your life. If it's under the blood, Jesus don't even know what you're talking about. So why are you wrestling with it? Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind, he said, I press toward the mark. Some of you need to start looking forward. You need to conquer that thing that's behind you. Hmm? Let me have you something. You can't change it. All you're doing is carrying it, and it's dragging you down. That's why you can't come to the house of God and rejoice. You, you're making yourself feel so unworthy. Well, i got good news for all of us, and there is none of us worthy to even speak His name. The only thing that makes us worthy is the blood of Jesus Christ. Hmm? And if Jesus has saved you, if He's forgave you, if He's robed you in His righteousness, you're worthy. So quit listening to the devil and quit buying them self-help books. You know the best self-help book you ever find? This one right here. It'll help yourself better than anything out there on the market. Hmm? It's time we conquer our flesh. There's some things that you're battling with in your flesh because, again, you won't give it to Jesus. Hmm? Hey, the flesh is strong, but the Spirit and the Word of God is stronger. So it's time you get in the Bible and you, you let the Spirit of God help you with your flesh. Hmm? Don't tell me you can't. There's not a person in this building had a hotter temper than I used to have. And every now and then I'll put Jesus on the shelf and it'll rear back up. But you, there ain't nobody in here that's ever had a worse temper than I've had. But God help me with that thing. Hmm? There's people in here tell you that, that they had a foul mouth, but they don't have a foul mouth anymore. Why? Because Jesus helped them with that thing. There are people in here tell you other things they had bad habits with. They don't have those bad habits anymore because Jesus helped. And Jesus is no respecter of person. If Jesus right. helped anybody, he'll help you. Yeah. It's time you conquer some things. Let me say this lastly because three of you have nodded off to sleep. Tis the season. Tis the season to celebrate. Tis the season to connect. Tis the season to conquer some things. But tis the season to charge. I love them old westerns. You love them westerns? Huh? Me and Brother Bob. Huh? Man, the cavalry would come through in that bugler, and he'd be on that bugle, and when he was playing that bugle, that meant charge. Huh? Too many folks are sitting around when it's time to charge. Huh? It's time to put the enemy on the run. It's time to charge. We need to charge onward. We sang it here not long ago. I love that old song, Onward Christian Soldiers. You know, nowhere in the Bible do we find that Christians are to retreat. We're to press on. We're to rest in the Lord. We're to draw strength from the Lord. But we're never to go back where we came from. God didn't part the Red Sea for Israel to go across it and then cross back over the Red Sea. That's why I closed it behind them. And I got news for you. God's closed some business of your yesteryear behind you. No place to go back to. It's time we charge. Charge onward. And I say this, it's time we charge others. It's time you get charged up and you charge somebody else up. Huh? You get fired up and get talking about the goodness of God, guess what? You might fire somebody else up. They get thinking about the goodness of God. Huh? Time to charge can I say this? This is a tool of the devil, but it's filtered into churches. The tool of the devil is to beat people down. If there's any place in the world where people ought to be lifted up, it's the house of God. Hey, the world will beat you down. The devil will beat you down. Your flesh will beat you down. You've had enough beat down. It's about time you got charged up. Hmm? Does not the Bible teach us that we're to edify one another? You know what that means? Build up. Miss Ned has a rule. Now, me and the boys didn't always follow it. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't say anything at all. Well, that ought to be the way at the house of God. 
Somebody comes in and say, oh, just, hey, it's good to see you. Don't say, where you been? That doesn't charge them up. That puts them on the defense. They might have had the COVID. They might have been vexed watching that loomy woman. You don't know. Don't ask them where they've been. So it's good to see you. Sure have missed you. Hey, why don't you sit next to me today? You know all that does? That builds people up. Right. I'm going to tell you, if somebody's not been here for a while, they got they got reservation walking in that door in the first place because the devil's already lied to them. Them people are going to talk bad about you. They've been talking bad about you, and they're not going to be happy to see you. And when they walk in, they see folks happy to see them. All of a sudden, they realize the devil's a liar. Uh, you ought to build somebody up. You ought to tell somebody that their dress looks nice even when it's ugly. Because I've seen some ugly dresses. Most of the time, Phil's wearing them. <clears throat> no, no, no. That is a woe right there, isn't it? <laughs> uh, five on that one, huh? All right. Yeah, getting ripped in church. I'm trying to build you up, Phil. Hang on. The end of the message. Uh, no, be good to people. Uh, you don't know where they've been and what they've been through. And until you've walked a mile in their shoes, you'll never know. You just don't know. But one thing we do know is we all need help. We all need encouragement. We all need a touch from the Lord. And if we run them off, they're not going to get the touch from the Lord. That's one thing I love about our church. We have such a warm and wonderful church, but we're not perfect. Uh, we're not perfect because I'm a member of it. You know what I'm saying? But heaven help us. Charge people up. Because uh, I promise you, if you hadn't had one, first of all, you hadn't lived very long, but if you haven't had one, you'll have a day where you need to be charged up. Uh, we ought to charge ourselves. Hmm? There's nothing worse then your phone running out and you don't have a charger. You put it on low power mode, but that only lasts so long. Too many God's people have been on low power mode. It's time we charge ourselves up. There's a lot of things that can charge you up. A good godly song will charge you up. A good portion of the Bible. Just find you a good verse that will charge you up. A good little talk with Jesus. That'll charge you up. Uh, a good remembering of where he found you and where you are today. That'll charge you up. There are a lot of things that can charge you up. Mm. Uh, it all depends on how we think. And see, the importance of being charged up, somebody needs to make a stand. And that's all Paul is telling Timothy in these verses. You need to make a stand. If we don't make a stand now, if there is a next generation, I shudder to think what kind of church they're going to have. Hmm? You do know that Congress, before the new Congress gets in in January, they just ram through some kind of defense bill, but on the back of it there's some kind of marriage act which says even churches are not exempt from being sued if we don't accept men marrying men and women marrying women. Now, fortunately, our bylaws, we've already settled that. I've been told there's not a judge in the, in the country, well, <laughs> any real judge in the country, that'll go against our bylaws. But I've got news for you. If we don't make a stand now, the next generation won't have that luxury. Amen. Hmm. Hmm. Matter of fact, I've already broke about 15 political correct things here this morning. But I'd rather be Bible correct than political correct. We need to charge ourselves up so we can make a stand. We need to charge ourselves up so we can serve. I've never seen a time where everybody wants to be the leader and nobody wants to be a servant. Can I help you with the most effective pastors I've ever known? They're servants. That's all any of us are, is a servant to the king. 
But everybody wants to be out front. Thank God for those that aren't interested in any notoriety, any recognition, that do things in the shadows because God rewards them openly. You need to charge yourself up to serve. And it's a thrill to get to do anything for Jesus. Uh, you also need to charge yourself up to just stay at it. Just stay at it till Jesus comes. You know, the, another great testimony of our church is how many folks that have been here for years. I mean, just years. Brother Larry Seals will be here, Lord willing, next Sunday. One of the first comments he'll make to me is, man, it's good to see them still here. Good to see them. He'll say it's good to see everybody here but Thad. <laughs> One time he was here preaching. said he preached about 15 minutes and preacher come up and give him, I don't know, thousand or fifteen hundred dollar love offering, and he said he wasn't worth ten cents. So ever since then, Brother Thad gives him nine cents, tells him he's not worth a dime. <laughs> well, that's a way to keep him humble, you know what I'm saying? Well, we just need to stay at it. Huh? Where else are we gonna go? <laughs> the Lord has the words of eternal life. <laughs> I'm not looking to get out, I'm looking to get more. But we just need to stay at it. Huh? Miss Dawn wrote me that poem years ago. We just need to keep on keeping on. Well, that's the only thing that matters. Whether or not you realize it, some of these young people is up here singing, they look up to you. If you quit, what message are you sending them? You know, one of the things I keep in the, in, in the forefront of my pea brain that I got. Even though I'm not a big deal, even though I'm a zero with the hole knocked out of it, some of these kids think I'm the big deal. And so I don't want to ever do anything that hurts that impression they have. Now when they get old, they'll find out he wasn't that big a deal. But right now they think I am. So I don't want to disappoint them. You ought to have the same mentality. You ought to just stay at it. They think you're something. They have confidence in you. They see this world like we see it. They see it even unfiltered. They're on the front lines. When they come in here, they see folks that they deem as holy. They see folks that they deem as godly. Just stay at it. Just stay at it. Because there'll come a day when all hell will come against them, and they'll remember... I remember Brother so-and-so singing. I remember Brother so-and-so testifying. I remember Sister so-and-so praying. I remember this. I remember that. I remember that. And they'll say, well, if they could do it, by God's grace, I'll do it too. Huh? Just stay at it. There's more at stake than we ever, ever, ever fathom. It's the season. Hmm? So it's Christmas time. Can I help you? It's tis the season till Jesus comes. It don't matter what the world's celebrating. We have reason to rejoice. I wonder, are you celebrating? Are you conquering? Are you connected? Are you committed? It's the season. If not now, when? And if you are, praise the Lord. Stick with it. Amen. Let's all stand. Brother Clint, come get a song of invitation. Maybe you need to charge somebody up today. Maybe you need to get charged up. Come get plugged in. Maybe you're here today and you're unsaved. Why don't you come? We'll take a Bible, show you how to be saved. You can get saved today. Lord loves you and wants to save you. Why in the world would you want to live another day still in your sins? You can be forgiven of all your sins. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Help us to stick with thy truth. Oh, God, I pray. You do a work in our hearts that, Lord, would propel us to live for you every day, not just a certain time of the year. Now, bless as only you can. Speak to hearts and get glory to your name. Save that one nearest hell. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' holy name, we ask these things. Amen. Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.